Hello everyone everywhere, this is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Welcome to your Freedom Through Faith video minute for today, which is May 1st. Have you ever tried witnessing or even just talking about your faith and you were ridiculed, mocked, made fun of, uh, persecuted? That's all a form of persecution. Has that ever happened to you? I know it's happened to me. So obviously, this is something that is common if you're going to share your faith. Now more than ever before, in today's culture and in today's society, Christianity is under attack, a full-blown, all-out attack by the liberals, by the media, uh, by some politicians. It is a commonality in today's environment that we as Christians are gonna suffer persecution. But we shouldn't be amazed by this. Matter of fact, we should embrace it. You know, the reason, well, let's go to some scriptures to back up what I'm saying. Jesus taught us about this. In Matthew chapter uh, 10, verse 22 and 23. But you should be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee to the next. For truly, I say to you, you will not have peace over the, all the cities of Israel. Or you will not have God over all the cities of Israel till the Son of Man comes. And there's a few more scriptures I have. Second Timothy 3, verse 12. Yes, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. John 15, 18. If the world hates you, Remember, it hated me before it hated you, Jesus said. Matthew 5, verse 44, But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13 and 14, Beloved, don't think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. Uh, 1 Peter 3, 17, it is better, if the will of God be so, that you suffer for doing well than for evil doing. 1 Peter 3, verse 14. But and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, you should be happy. Do not be afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. 1 Peter 3, verse 16. Having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, uh, as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conver conversation in Christ. And that's where I want to focus at. The reason the persecution is here is because of Jesus. It's because of the word. It's because of the truth that you are exposing to them. Their hearts are under conviction. And that is probably one of the best things that could happen is when you receive persecution for standing on the word of God, believing what you're saying here, sharing your faith, sharing the gospel with supposedly unbelievers, many times you'll be persecuted in your own church. Sometimes you'll be persecuted just for saying this is how you believe. And the conviction that is in the wrong person, the evil person's heart, convicts that that word is bringing conviction to their heart, and they're lashing out. They want to stop hearing the truth. They want to stop hearing about, you know, what the Bible has to say. They want you to stop sharing your faith. We see that on television and in news reports all the time. Here in America, it is beginning to become unpopular, it is beginning to become, in some cases, they're trying to make sharing your faith illegal here in America. The land of the free, home of the brave, a country founded on the principles of God, on the word of God, and we are suffering persecution. But one thing I want you to remember. <laughs> Everywhere that the church was persecuted, it began to grow. It flourishes. When they are coming together against the Christians, it causes the Christians to come together, to unite together, to pray together, and that's the key thing. 
and God answering their prayers by delivering them from the tormentors, by delivering them so they can share the gospel more. When persecution comes, rejoice. Hallelujah. When people talk evil about you for doing good, praise God. Amen. In 2 Corinthians uh, verse chapter 4, verse 8 through 12, through 12, it goes on to say, you know, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Uh, we're perplexed, not in despair, and it goes on. Uh, Romans 12, 17 to 21, don't repay man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. You know, 1 John 3, 13, mar do not marvel if the world hates you. Amen. But Matthew 5, verse 10, bless them which persecute you. Bless them. Pray for them. That's the key thing. When you're persecuted, just pray for the person because the word has penetrated their defenses and is sticking needles in their heart. Every time you preach the word, it's sticking another needle in that person's heart. Eventually, they will have to make the decision, yes or no, to Jesus. It may appear they say no today, and as you back off and leave them to themselves and you come back home or wherever your safe zone is, pray for that person. Just because they did not receive the word from you, just because they did not want to have Jesus as their Savior from what you said, there is somebody in this world they will listen to. And just pray that God would continue to send laborers across their path. Because as you start receiving persecution and praying for those that persecute you because you know the word is doing its job. Oh, praise God. The word works every time. It's just a matter of when. Amen. And that's when